Oh, hello everyone. Um, well, I'll be honest. I am not going to call myself Wrathful Lion here because I'm honestly thinking of changing my name. Some things have come up lately and, well, it's led me to do a lot of thinking or reevaluating my life, so to speak. As a result, I'm, you may find that my YouTube name has changed, or not, who knows. But let's get to the main topic of this video. Now, first off, let me just say, this will be the last thing I ever say, the, the last thing I will ever do regarding the um, console known as the Xbox One. Now, this is just an estimation, and I'm going to leave a link to it in the description, so please... Don't take my word on this, or just... Oh, uh, geez, hard to come up with words right now. Here's the thing, basically. This could be wrong, or they could change this later on. I just want to give my feelings on it at right now, since I just found out, just because I want to give my two cents on this and what I think would happen if this were true. Okay. Basically, EB Games has done an estimation of the price of Xbox One games and the console console itself and it's come out to the Xbox One would be nine hundred dollars and a game would be a hundred and eighteen dollars a hundred and eighteen dollars okay now I'm of the opinion that sixty dollars for a game is insane right off the bat, but a hundred and twenty dollars, hundred and twenty. Okay, you know, if if you if you are, if you still are defending Xbox, if you're defending the Xbox One, well, okay, I'm sure you have your reasons for why you're defending it. But okay, look, if anyone who is watching this is an Xbox One fan. You you still support it. You still defend it despite all the flaws that I pointed out in my last video or flaws that anyone else has pointed out. Please just answer me this. Can you defend this? Think about it. The console currently is estimated to be $900. Think about what you can buy for $900. Just think about it. Nine hundred dollars. Have you thought about it? Okay, now now think about this. Games are estimated to cost a hundred and twenty dollars. It's really a hundred and eighty, but just let's just call it a hundred and twenty now. A hundred and twenty dollars. That is the price of two games at the moment. That's two, at the moment that's money that could be spent two Xbox 360 games. And now consider this. You completely... It, it's hard enough tr throwing down $60 as it is for a game at the moment because you don't really know what you're going to get out of it. I mean, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, yes, it's a fun game, but it's only like six hours long and you paid $60. It, it is not worth $60, no matter how much fun you had with it. You're still going... Ideally, you're going to want to wait for it to come in price, or you're going to want to rent it, or you're going to want to borrow it from a friend. So now imagine that you go to GameStop or, or Amazon or Target, and you pick up a new Xbox One game, and you spend $120 for it. From everything that magazines like Game Informer, like, like sites like IGN were saying, it, it's looking to be like this awesome game, this really awesome game. You you put it in, you download it, which is dumb in itself, by the way, and then you only get four hours out of it, and it's pretty much, it, it, it's, uh, what's the best way to compare it to? It's like Kalinch 2. It's only four hours long. There's no additional modes. It's not, not really that much fun. It's, a, it's like, like, like beating head against a brick wall for hours. Just, it's that repetitive. Just imagine that. What are you going to do? You just spend $120 on a game that was nowhere near the price. Am I the... I'm, I know I'm not the only one who sees the problem with this. If this is if this true, if it's true, it may not be true, okay? 
See, here's the thing. There, a video game is not worth, nor will it, nor will any one game for console ever be worth that much money. I'm sorry, but I am of the honest opinion that no game, no matter how good, should ever, on its own merits, cross a hundred dollar mark. Ever. Ever. Not unless it is the single greatest video game of all time that every single person can agree on. A hundred percent. And this stems back to the problem I have with games being C dollars. See, this is all opinion, but video games should really be thirty dollars because let's think about this for a minute. I am aware that development costs are high and that you do need to charge a lot for a video game, especially since up to four years of development can go into making a video game. But here's the thing. $60 is a lot of money, and generally for someone in the working class, you're only going to be able to get one game a month. Now imagine if you drop that to $30. Not only would you sell, not only would people buy more games, like they wouldn't just buy one new release or two new releases, they might go as far as to buy three new releases. That's about, that's about, uh, that's, that's about 90 bucks right there. And you just managed to sell, and you, and you met, and the person bought three games. In addition to that, instead of forcing people to, to really like look through the, look through the new release and be like, oh, I, don't, I don't know, do I want this RPG or do, do I want this FPS or, or, or do I or, or do I want this strategy? I, I don't know. What, what do I want? Oh, do I want that survival? No, instead it could be like, oh, okay, I'll grab this one and this one and this one and I'll get that one later. You would encourage business, you encourage, basically what you do, in my opinion, is you would allow for all these companies to make money, it would help the industry stay afloat. Basically, it would allow the industry to survive by working with each other instead of just being like, "We're charging sixty dollars for this game. We're charging sixty dollars for this game." You gotta choose. You can only choose one, buddy, unless you're really rich. Then, then you can get a whole bunch. And it's like, well, I, I, I don't know what. I, uh, I don't know what to get. That's just my opinion, and I'm getting off topic here. I, I just wanted to point out. This is ridiculous. It's it's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. I was tempted to facepalm, but I didn't because honestly, it's I wasn't that shocked by it. With all the stuff Microsoft has pulled in the last year, I was not surprised by it in the slightest. This kind of thing is exactly the kind of thing they would do. It wasn't enough that the Xbox has to be online all the time now. The Xbox One, which I still can't get over, it's not enough that you won't be able to play used games on it, but it's not bad enough that it's basically just a multimedia center, which any PC nowadays can outperform, but now you're charging, I'm, I'm trying to think of the best word for it, you're charging you know what? No, I, I'm, I'm not going to waste brain power trying to think of the, the best word to describe the insane amount that you're asking for. This is just ridiculous. There, there's, you know what? There it is. It's ridiculous. No one with any amount of common sense is going to spend $120 for a game that may or may not be worth that may or may not be worth it. No one. I certainly won't, and I would never do it. And to anyone who says, oh, you'll probably do it as a PS... No, I won't. Let me make this clear now. This is what I expect from the PS4. And Tony, if any of you, the guys who work at Sony, are watching this, which I highly doubt, but still, listen. This will let you win, basically. This is con war. The PS4, $430 for the console, either lower the price of the games to $50, Keep it at sixty dollars, or if you have to raise it, only raise it by five or ten dollars. Because I promise you, no one with common sense is going to pay a hundred and twenty dollars for one game. 
No one. Not unless you're like screw it, duck. That I have to say on this map. So, uh, yeah, I'm out. Just, I'm out.